Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let us now discuss this ubudiyya, this meaning of abd, of servitude, of slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it really mean? What is the linguistic meaning of the word? How can we be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time? If that's the purpose of creation, can we really be in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, at all times? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions or calls us with this name of Abd. For many of us today, when we translate it as slave or servant, it doesn't really ring a bell with us. It, it seems quite negative to us. Slave, you know, it's something we, we, we haven't seen the reality of a slave. Something in the past, it's something humiliated, something low, something not to do. You know, why would you want to be a slave? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses it in a way to really give us the image of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of it, a slave, yes, a slave is humble, humiliated, a slave owns nothing, a slave follows all the commands of his master or her master, a slave has no real say in, in his or her life in that sense. So a slave is there for the master, to serve the master. So in that similar way, we as creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the highest position with, Allah, with human beings. If the relationship between you and another human being is one of slave and master, that is so you know, degrading, so humiliating. It's something you would never want to be. However, this same relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the highest level, highest uh, status you can have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even refers to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as his abd. You know, when he describes that he took him on the uh, night journey from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, the word he uses here, is a slave, abd, the, that glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who took his abd on this night journey, on this journey from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa. So in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the highest status that creation can gain, to be a true servant, a true slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean in reality? Well, first of all, just imagine the relationship, just picture it, visualize it. We are closest when we are the most humble, when we uh, make ourselves lowest in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, when your forehead touches the floor in salah, in sajda, this is the lowest you can put your head, your most uh, honorable part of the body is your forehead. Right? The most honorable part, if somebody wants to show respect and kiss you on your forehead, that's how they show honor and respect, right? So your most honorable part of your body is your forehead. When you place that, when you make that the lowest, right? And the lowest point is to place it on the earth. The most humiliated or humble position to be is when you place your forehead on the head, uh, on the floor, on the ground. This is the position, in fact, when you are the most high in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The lower you make yourself, the more humble you make yourself, the higher you become in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we all know that we are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sajda when we are not arrogant, when we humble ourselves, when we put the forehead on the ground. This is the highest point we can achieve. So if we visualize this relationship, that the lower we become, the more humble we become, the higher we become in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our status in the sight of Allah becomes higher, not the other way around. Because the Prophet said, the person with one atom's weight of arrogance, of pride in the heart will not enter Jannah. So the opposite of being humble, of humiliating, uh, of, of being uh, full of humility, of reckoning oneself as low, the opposite is to have pride, is to have arrogance, is to think you're independent, is to think you don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to think you don't need to follow 
the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to think, you know what, you know, that, that stuff is out there, deen is there, Islam is there, but you know what, I'll, I'll do what I like, I'll do what I prefer, I don't, this religion doesn't make sense to me. So I'll live my life the way I want. That's arrogance. That is pride. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. And that makes you the most distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first is this relationship. And it's very important to remember this throughout our lives. That the lower we make ourselves, the more humble, the more we are self-humiliating in a positive sense. In relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the higher we are. That's number one. Number two, how then do we make our life full of worship? The beautiful thing about this deen, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not want hardship for us. This prayer, let's take one example, this salah. Everybody knows that when it was first revealed, this command for salah, how many times a day was it revealed for? We were ordered to pray 50 times a day. 50 times a day, five zero. Imagine that would almost mean, you know, probably around five salahs every hour. Not five salahs a day, five prayers every single hour. Is this possible for anybody to do? Is that practical for anyone to do? When we reflect on this, that it would have been 50 prayers, because when Prophet Sassam received the order for prayer in Mi'raj, when he went to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's Musa alayhi salam who told him, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to reduce because your ummah will not be able to bear this. And we know the story until it was reduced more and more until it came down to five times a day prayer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease for us. This deen is not hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, he wants for you ease. He does not want hardship for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made so many ways of being in a mode of worship, even in non-ritual. We think, you know, we're brought up to think prayers, fasting, hajj, this is ibadah, this is worship. This is following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But actually having, eating food, dinner with your family, um, helping somebody, smiling at somebody, um, having good morals, having good character, greeting somebody, um, helping somebody else. These are all acts of ibadah. So a believer's life, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He's only created us solely for worship, it's very easy and possible with the guidance of Islam to live a life of 24-7 throughout the week, throughout the year, throughout your life to be in ibadah. It's very possible. How? It's through intention. It's through intention. If I wake up in the morning and I go out to work, leave my house to earn halal income, to serve my family, to serve myself, this is ibadah. You are actually going out. You will be rewarded every step of the way. You will be rewarded when you go to your office, when you go to your business. The time you spend there, you will be rewarded. If you say Bismillah before you do something, you will be rewarded. The Prophet some said, smile at your brother for it is charity. Even smiling at somebody is charity, is rewarding. Meaning a believer's life, all of it can be rewarding, all of it can be counted as worship. So, but it's a matter of perspective, it's a matter of intention. As the Prophet some said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ That indeed actions are judged by their intention. So if we intend and we understand the Islamic concept of worship, that it's not fixed once a week or every Friday. It's not fixed just you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the prayer mat. But rather, every aspect of our lives can become worship. If we do it in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu if we do it in accordance to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we do it with the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we do it with the intention of serving others, of helping our family, our communities. If we keep that niyyah, you're from the school, college, university, all of these exams you take, studies you do, every single thing can become an act of worship. And this is how a believer's life is comprehensively lived as one with full purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So this is the first major purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with, is to live a life of ubudiyah. And there's more dis uh, details to discuss on this, inshallah. We'll be doing that in the forthcoming episodes. So as we mentioned today, that there's three things that make us forget to be heedless, to be in ghafla, uh, to be deceived. And then once we remember that, we must engage in the first major uh, purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Inshallah, we'll be discussing further on this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.